everyone welcome back to my floss tube again so uh, if you saw the last video um, I started doing a whip parade and then I realized I only got a, got about halfway through the whips that I had so I had a look I've got about five or six more that I haven't included so this will be part two of the whip parade um, and I've also got a lot of haul so I had been intending to cut down what I was buying because I was, you know, literally every cupboard in my house, when you open it, cross-stitch supplies will fall on you. So I had intended to calm down the spending, but uh, to no avail. Um, now, before I get on to other things, so in the last video, I had a giveaway. So I had wanted to give away a Bella Filipina pattern um, and then I also decided I'll also throw in some linen some hand dyed linen and some floss some mystery linen and floss as well so to enter you had to have commented telling me what your first cross stitch was um, so I used the random comment picker and the winner is Helen Lunn so I will um, comment on your comment below and just uh, DM me on Instagram to let me know your address um, yes so on to the whips ah actually maybe I'll start with a new start so I haven't actually done a dimensions kit before though I have a feeling I did one uh, when I was in high school, like when I first started cross stitching, it was one with a wizard or a dragon or something. Um, but I've seen a lot of people post their dimension um, cross stitch online and um, it's got quite a unique style. There's usually a lot of color gradation, um, fractional stitches, French knots, and I'm really into like these lighthouse beachside scenes lately uh, so I saw this one um, it's only a small one and I started it it's not a great it's not a huge start so I was just, I've only done like five stitches and these are all ooh, half stitches um, but so far I think the kit is really well put together uh, it's just on Ada and I was impressed with their floss system so normally you get those floss cards and with the punched holes and you just have to pull out the thread but this has got some sort of foam thread holding thing and you can just pull out one or two strands at a time and the rest will just stay stuck here so it seems like it'll be a lot easier to keep control of the floss um, but yes, yeah, so that was one of the new starts, which I didn't really need to start, but anyway. Um, so this was one of the whips. I don't think I included this last time, but this is uh, an Al Forest kit. Um, it's Ukka, I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce it, but it's a fish stew pattern. That's what, it's, what, what it looks like in the end, if it's focusing in. So it's got all the ingredients for this Russian stew. Um, yeah, so I've slowly been progressing on this. Oh. Um, this is what I'm up to. I've just done the central few motifs, the lobsters, the pot. Um, this is a lot bigger than I thought it would be. So it took me quite a while to do these large motifs. Um, yeah, so I'll slowly plug away at this. Oh, I got these really cool scissors as well. So these are titanium scissors. Hmm. Um, I try and buy scissors for every project I have, but I haven't quite caught up yet. And what else have I got? Oh, I did show you this one last week actually. So don't worry about that. This is, oh, this is another new start. So this is another, this is a stitch along actually. 
Um, this is by Lola Crow Cross Stitch and it's the Haunted Library Stitch Along. So I was kind of umming and ahhing about starting this because I already had a few Stitch Alongs I'm already behind on. But I really love this skeleton motif. It kind of reminded me of um, this old adventure game, Monkey Island. I talked a bit about adventure games in my last video. So, I don't know, they just give me this happy, nostalgic feel because I played a lot of them when I was little. Um, so if you don't know, Monkey Island is like the gold standard of adventure games. Um, the first one came out in, I think, 94, maybe before that. But there was a part where you're on this skeleton pirate ship. Um, and this, this way of designing the skeleton just kind of remind me of pixel art and the pixelated skeletons in that game. So I've already messed this up in terms of the where I've put the stitches. So they're not exactly lining up and I really hate unpicking. So I'm just going to keep going and hopefully it'll sort itself out or you may not notice the mistakes um, yeah and with the cloth management I've just I've been using these lately just these organizer boxes and using the floss bobbins I also like the color palette of this one again it kind of reminds me of old pixelated games even the palette oh these are my new favorite snips they make a really satisfying noise they like a matte kind of black. So yeah, so that's a new stitch line I've started. Uh, what else is in reach? Okay. Hmm. I'm still in my work clothes. I just got back from work. Um, yeah, I was just thinking today. So I work as a psychiatry. Uh, registrar so I'm a doctor training in mental health I remember when I started um, training in medicine as an intern one of my bosses told me if you when you dress for work in the hospital you have to wear clothes that you'd be comfortable in if you had to tell someone their child had died and for some reason that really stuck with me so I used to be really into like not I wouldn't say fashion but um, yeah, I had fun making different outfits. Um, people will kind of comment on them. But then when I started working as a doctor and I received that advice, I was just like, oh, I can't do that anymore. I have to wear something very bland and boring in case that day comes when I deliver bad news. And um, it's a bit strange. I don't know why I associated that giving of bad news with wearing something quite bland and not particularly in line with my personality um, and now that I'm in psychiatry it's it's very rare like I've never had to tell someone um, that their child has died uh, sorry this is going on a very dark angle but um, yeah so I'm still wearing boring office clothes to work when I can probably change it up a bit now um, now that I'm not so much in the acute side of medicine Anyway, I will get on with this. So, oh, this is another stitch along. The supernatural stitch along. Um, yeah, so I've got a couple of these Halloween themed stitch alongs that I'm doing this month. Um, so this is one I'm quite behind on. I've d again, did I show you this in the last video? can't remember but I've made progress on it even if I did show you so I'm up to the banshee now I've been trying to use some metallic thread on each of these so I've used red in bits on the werewolf blue for the siren and some gold for the banshee um, I did start off also using a lot of beads so I had beads for the eyes in the skulls but then it kind of stood out and didn't really match with the rest of the piece so I took those beads out I've still got some beads on the siren but I'm not really wanting to add beads into every little creature so I might take those out as well um, 
yeah but I really like this piece I've been slowly adding to this oh. and I got this um, black DMC cone of doom so I'm guessing this will last me for a while there's a lot of black in this project uh, and these are the metallics that I've got that I'm hoping to use so these are sulky brand metallics I didn't realize at the time but they're like they're not the usual metallic thread they're like a foil they're just kind of like a small piece of foil that's meant to give more of an ultra shiny effect whereas this is your more standard metallic where it's got it's got metallic bits in it but as well as regular thread so the sulky uh, I don't even remember what it's called silver silver metallic but this is not silver this is gold anyway so this one it's pretty hard to work with it sort of slides all over the place but I'm only using it for small sections so it's been bearable uh, so I've got a couple of pieces in here I don't think I've shown you before this one is part of the Hawk Run Hollow series so I started working on the shores of Hawk Run Hollow and this is the first square so this has taken me forever to do I don't know why it's very stitch dense there's heat, like a hundred stitches in the tiny part of that lighthouse so it's taken me a really long time I still haven't finished this one square um, and you may notice I've just cut this out there are like nine squares but I've decided not to go with that um, I have decided that let me just get the patterns that I want to discuss out okay mm, yeah so it comes with nine squares that you're meant to stitch from but I wasn't a huge fan of all these motifs so it's meant to be so that's the first square, first square um, so I thought I would combine this with the houses of Hawkrun Hollow and just pick out the squares that I liked and make them into a book I don't know how I'm going to do that but yeah I really like some of these squares like this one which other one the ones with the crows I like um, and I didn't want to spend ages stitching squares Oops, that I wasn't in love with so I'm just going to kind of combine the two and um, somehow make them into a book I think oh there's something oops sorry. there's something else oh, there's another project here oh, where is it uh, I think I've left that downstairs I'll show you next time so this is a kind of new start that I had left for ages and then I just got a burst of stitching energy and picked it up again so this is a Barbara Anna the winged dreams Sal Geelong. Um, yeah so I am about halfway through now I've been making a lot of cross stitch mistakes lately more than usual so this one I don't know if you can tell but the face is a bit uneven I kind of tried to fix it up but one side is higher than the other I think you can't really tell from far away and I'm not gonna unpick it um, yeah I really I like the blue variegated thread that she's used really pretty so I will keep going on that um, and I have one finish oh, so this is a stitch along that I've actually finished I think this is the first stitch along I've finished um, I haven't framed it but obviously this is what I'm planning to frame it in so this is the Gnomeville stitch along by um, so Little Dove Designs uh, we'll go through that the lines of that so I thought this was really cute I want to make it uh, <clears throat> to put in my daughter's room uh, I have subbed out some of the colors so I used rainbow thread here and 
For the snail and the moth wings, I used a cottage garden thread to give that variegated look. Yeah, I really like the trees in this, they're so cute. And this was really easy to stitch, it didn't take long. Um, the motifs were quite rewarding as they popped up. And there's a bit of back stitching, like on these lanterns, but it's not difficult. Um, yeah, so I'm going to frame that at some point. I've been using this kind of sticky board. So I normally stick the fabric on here, stretch it around, uh, take out the glass from a frame and then put it in the frame. So I'll do that it's on my to-do list. Um, yeah, so that's all the whips. There are oh, there's a few other things I could show you. So I got this recently. This is a DMC color chart, um, but this one is with threads. So it's got it's got all the DMC thread samples. And this is awesome. I'm really, I was umming and ahhing about getting this for a while because it was quite expensive. It was $80 or $90. But um, the reason why I wanted it is because um, it's, I wanna, sometimes I want to start a pattern, but I won't have the DMCs. Uh, but a lot of the DMCs are really quite similar, so I want to sub substitute them with a similar one that I may have. But um, it's really onerous to look them up online and then try and figure out which DMCs you can substitute. So with this, I thought um, I could just at a glance look for approximate colours and see if I had those with me. Um, but yeah, so if you can see, it's got like the actual DMC threads wrapped around. And that's really cool. It's even got sorry, even got the metallic threads. They're really pretty. And glow in the dark threads. It's got everything. Yeah, so I'm planning to use this when I start a new project, just so I don't keep buying and doubling up on DMCs I don't need. Um, so I thought I would also review some squat there. Uh, cross stitch planners that I bought. I went through a phase of buying a few of these. So this one is quite um, readily available on Amazon. I've added the stickers but uh, keep calm and cross stitch and I thought it would be like a cross stitch planner with different sections maybe dates but I have to say I was a bit disappointed because it's just got this page printed over and over again um, which is like a record of the whips you have. So I did start doing this, like this was for my uh, Spider Mama piece, which I finished and just added some stickers. Um, yeah, what else have I got in here? Um, there's a sticker. Uh, yeah, so I, yeah, I wasn't too impressed with this. I thought you could just print out these pages and not have to put it in a book. Um, but this one, the Needlework Book of Days, I really like. Um, I think it's hard to find the 2022 one now, so we're almost through 2022, but you can get 20, you can pre-order 2023. So this one was more interesting. It's kind of, it's got the days and you can put in what you've been working on each day and it's got these quotes related to cross stitch um, so I started doing this in July you can see what I've been working on in July like the stitch alongs um, yeah well I haven't kept up with it but if you are one that likes to write down what you're doing then this would be good for you um, it's got quotes in it too. So what's this? Perhaps the modern triumph of no art is more marked than that of the making of thread now. Huh? Don't really get what that's supposed to mean, but piece that I wanted to show you. And this has just been a comedy of errors doing this. Um, this is a really nice pattern by the Blue Flower. So it's called From Nature to My Needle um sorry i've only got a black and white but 
it's got all these nice uh, images of natural materials or animals that we get uh, cross stitch fibers or linen from so it's got alpacas sheep uh, silkworms I think that's a silk moth yeah so I've made several errors in judgment about this first of all I decided to stitch it on 40 count linen which um, yeah it's hard so I can only do this in really good light like 40 count is tiny I don't know why I committed to this tiny thread count but um, yeah I won't be doing that again second error I made was I somehow put the things in the wrong place so these two motifs are meant to be up here and that line of text is meant to be here so all right just forget about that creature for a moment but initially I had nothing there and it was just the gap there was annoying me so I thought I would add a cat and I wanted to add a cat because um, a, a lot of cat hair gets incorporated in my projects so I thought it would fit with the theme of natural fibers that go into cross stitch um, so I was using um, another one of the blue flowers patterns to get that, that motif of a cat so I was trying to put uh, this cat in my project <laughs> and I wanted to use colors that um, were already in this color palette so it wouldn't look too weird for some reason <laughs> it looks like a giant rat um, and again I couldn't be bothered unpicking this so I'm just left with this strange giant rat in the middle of my piece uh, I can't even justify why there would be a rat here like I don't stitch with rat hair if you look close it kind of looks like a cat I just got the colors all wrong and there's no white in this piece and ideally I should have used white for the other bits but yeah I might I don't know I might unpick it if it annoys me too much but yeah it's just a giant rat slash possum looking thing there now Oh dear. Okay, so hmm, I can show you my haul of which there is many. Lots. Lots of haul. Um okay, so this arrived from 123 Stitch. Um I've started on none of these by the way. But I got a few Mill Hill patterns. So this one, Autumn Harvest, it's a duck. I've never done a Mill Hill kit before. I'm excited to start one. This one's just a, I thought I'd make that for my daughter. And I like this one. It's got the rooster's barnyard theme. It even comes with a little button. Yeah, so I got three of these. I haven't started them yet, but they will one day. Um, I really like these Just Nan mice kits. So that's the mouse. It's the birthday, no, Queen of the Needle mouse. And this is her Queen of the Needle throne. And it's got little beehive bees. So these kits, they don't come with very much. They don't come with the thread or the linen. They just come with the embellishments. Um, so what spins and that's got the embellishments for the mouse so I haven't started these because um, I wanted to use just the DMC's in my stash um, but I was waiting for where did I put it I was waiting for the DMC book so I could just approximate with what I had so I should be able to start those soon what else have I got I think I may have shown this before, but I got these um, stitch and inch charts from By the Bay Needle Art. So I had to also get these from 123 Stitch because uh, they don't really sell them in Australia. Now that I remember, I think I did show these before because I talked about the Lighthouse and King's Quest 3 
um, but I've got some they're for every season so there's four there's spring and even though I said I wouldn't stitch on 40 count again I think stitching these on 40 count might be okay they're not very big and yeah I think they'd look cute if I just stitched them to size think that's actually everything um, so uh, I wanted to talk about houseplants a little bit um, so I've got two of my favorites here I was going to talk about this one because it's a bit controversial this houseplant um, so this is called pink princess it's a um, it's a man-made variant of a philodendron um, some people say Philodendron Congo was the main, the starting plant, but it's, um, but it's been created from that starting point by people. Sorry, I, this is not the best way to express what I'm trying to say. Anyway, yeah, so this is Philodendron Pink Princess. About five years ago, it was in huge demand. It was like the house plant. It was really hard to find, like hundred dollars plus a plant because um, people really like this bubblegum pink variegation and this particular plant doesn't have a huge amount of it it's got splashes here and there some new growth um, but yeah this plant was very much in demand and I think there was only one or two su people suppliers who had the hybrid and were producing it um, but after a while um, a plant that looked really similar to this started flooding the shops and people bought it and it was pretty cheap um, but the problem was it wasn't a real philodendron pink princess so it had this bright pink bubblegum pink color in the shops and then when people brought them home it would just lose all that variegation and would revert to kind of this muddy green color so yeah, people were quite upset and what they found was that um, a company had artificially created this pink color by uh, putting a particular gas um, in the greenhouse um, and in in the presence of that gas you'd get the pink but when you took the plant home you'd lose it and you just get a regular green plant so people were quite annoyed um, and it's again quite hard to find this hybrid because it, it's a tissue culture plant um, which means it's made um, in a sterile kind of lab from offcuts of the main um, variant plant so it, it has come down in price it's not as crazy as it was this one I I didn't pay too much for it I got it as a tube stock a few years ago and I think the tube stock was only and 20 or 30 dollars um, and it's very slow growing so compared to a wild type philodendron um, it is super slow at growing so if I had a wild type philodendron it would be kind of the size of half of me by now but this okay one. so yeah it puts out about one new leaf every few months and it needs high light higher than a normal philodendron which is quite a low light plant and that's because any plant with variegation especially this unusual variegation will need uh, more light to produce energy so these pink parts don't have chlorophyll so you have to kind of make up for it by having a higher light so this plant is the star jewel of my collection so this is called Anthurium crystallinum um, Anthuriums are are a genus of house plant that include the flamingo plant which is quite common in the hobby it's um, it doesn't look anything like this but it's got those pink flamingo flowers they're also known as lipstick plants um, and they're quite hardy and easy to grow these varieties of anthurium are more on the other side of the spectrum in terms of difficulty they're very difficult to grow and they're quite rare in the hobby so this one I actually bought this from seed because the seed was cheaper than the plant to buy a specimen like this 
back a few years ago when it was popular I think it would have been 200 um, maybe they've come down now but I didn't want to spend that much on a plant so I bought the seeds um, which is a bit of a risk because it can be hard to germinate tropical seeds um, but I thought I'd give it a try and I bought about 10 anthurium seeds and two germinated and so I've got I had two plants um, so I had one for a year and then that just died I don't know why and this is the sole survivor of those 10 seeds um, so you may notice this leaf has been chewed off so my daughter cut this off the other day because she wanted a leaf for her game so I gave her a, a um, stern talking to about which leaves she can and cannot remove for games so this was one of the don't touch the leaves on this please plants um, yeah so it's called a crystallinum because I'm not sure if this comes across in the video but the leaves the white parts of the leaves have this metallic sheen the whole leaf is sort of covered with this fine fuzz that makes it metallic this is a new leaf that's just come out this year so I'm really excited it only puts out like one leaf a year um, maybe that's not true it probably should be putting out more if you look after it properly like if you fertilize it more uh, so I, I kind of neglected this so with neglect it'll put out one leaf a year um, this one's looking a bit sad I keep meaning to repot it because I've got it in this terracotta pot which I know it hates these plants need them they're, they're from tropical areas they need more moisture so I have been meaning to put this in a plastic pot that will retain more moisture I haven't done it because these are really prone to root rot the ones that I lost earlier like the seedlings were all from root rot so I was really cautious with not letting the, the soil get too moist but now that it's developed quite a good root system I think I can let go of that fear and put it in a plastic pot um, and they're quite prone to the roots getting cold so I've put it in another pot for insulation and it survived the winter whereas the other seedling wasn't so lucky so I think it may have been too cold for the other one during winter okay so that's it for today um, so Helen Lunn you're the winner from the giveaway so please remember to contact me on Instagram and we will I will there's no we I will send out your prize